I would move to approve. Yep. Motion by Alder Garlock to approve. Seconded by Alder Weary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Can you uh, repeat who made the motion and who seconded it? Uh, Alder Garlock made the motion. Alder Weary seconded. Thank you. So Alder Weary is first, but he seconded. Never mind. Ready for the next item. <laughs> it's, it's a stretch. Uh, on to item two, consideration with possible action on approving the purchase of a two, 270 foot snow tube conveyor belt lift system from Magic Carpet Lifts RMCE Inc. for a total cost of $156,340. Staff? So I've included uh, in the agenda packet the quote that was submitted to us from Magic Carpet Lifts. Uh, so in 2021, the city bonded 175000 for the purchase and installation of a snow tube conveyor belt lift system at Triangle Hill in the Bairds Creek Greenway. So the current lift system that we have right now has a series of clips or hooks that's attached to a steel cable and people sit down on the, on the tube and they clip onto these hooks which then carries them up the hill as they're sitting on the tube. Uh, this system works better than the previous system, which in the past we had just a rope that you had to hold on to as you went up the hill. And as you can imagine, a lot of people slipped as they were going up the hill. So we've only had this system in place a few years, but we have run into several issues with this existing tube hill lift system that has caused us to reconsider purchasing a new lift. Uh, we did buy that uh, previous lift, the one we currently have used, uh, so it was a fairly economical purchase. Uh, when we acquired it a few years ago. So as most of you know, uh, we don't have snow making equipment at uh, Triangle Hill. Therefore, we are reliant on mother nature and we can only open when there's adequate snow. What we found with the current lift system is that it requires a large base of snow under the cable to operate properly. On nearly a daily basis, our, our staff does have to go out there and shovel snow onto that lift uh, hill just so that we have enough snow to open the facility up. Uh, in addition, uh, if it reaches temperatures over 35 degrees, uh, the snow becomes slushy and the lift system doesn't work properly. So we do have to shut down the hill whenever it reaches about 35 degrees, even if there's adequate snow on the hill. So. Over the last three years, we do estimate that there were 46 days where there wasn't enough snow to sled or it was warm enough that you could still sled, but we had to close the facility just because the current lift system wasn't functioning because uh, of lack of snow or it was too warm. The new system that we'd like to switch to is a conveyor belt system where the user stands on the conveyor belt holding onto their tube uh, rope and then they ride it up to the top of the hill as they're standing and holding the tube behind them. So our research showed that this is quickly becoming common practice for most uh, tubing and ski hills. Approximately five years ago, Kiwani has a similar tubing hill system and they switched their list system from a clip-on system to a conveyor belt system. We reached out to them and they love this conveyor belt system. They've, in, they've indicated that this new system increases the lift capacity by three to four times the capacity of the clip lift system. So you can actually get people up the hill much faster with this conveyor belt system than what we have out there now. And I did go out to Kiwani last year on my own with my family, and I can attest to that. Uh, I only had to wait a few minutes at the most, even though there were huge lines. Uh, whereas at, at Baird Creek on a busy day, you could wait 15, 20 minutes to use the lift once, and, uh, which is frustrating to some people. And some people on nice days, they just choose to walk up the hill instead of waiting that long for the lift. So we did, re we did research this quite a bit uh, to see what companies were out there to get competitive quotes. And we only found two companies that provide this type of a system. One company, and one of those companies is located out of the country. So most of the tubing hills and ski hills that we reached out to, by far the vast majority of them have decided to purchase the system from Magic Carpet Lifts, which is a United States company, for the sole reason that they didn't want to uh, work with a company from outside of the States. Uh, they were afraid of running into a problems with tech support, 
And also, if the lift breaks down mid-season and you have to order new parts, um, getting those replacement parts in a quick manner from overseas would be difficult. And we, we've run into those same situations with our rides at Bay Beach Amusement Park, and we really do not prefer buying rides from overseas either at, at, at Bay Beach. So we do have some experience with that. So our preference is to do a sole source purchase because we were not able to find another company in the United States that provides a similar lift system. And every place we reached out to is very happy with the system that they have. So um, like I said, we're proposing a sole source uh, quote for this purchase. And if you look at the quote summary, the, the quote came in at $156,340. Uh, which I believe also included uh, the cost of a railing on one, a handrail along one side, uh, which is nice to have if somebody so that somebody doesn't lose their balance as they as they go up the lift. So this definitely fits within our budget of 175,000. Uh, we would use the remaining portion to for installation costs. Our crews will be installing this, but we do have to make some modifications to. Uh, the lifts and the buildings that are there and the electrical in order for this new system to work. But we think we can still get it all done within our $175,000 budget. So I would recommend approval. Any questions or comments from anyone? Alder Weary. Thanks. Um, director, is this for installation for this uh, winter? No, it would not be. The earliest that we could get the system is, I believe, in May is what the quote says. So okay. this would be for the next snow, the next oh, winter, yeah. winter season. Um, yeah, I can attest to the, the weights. We go there as much as we can as well. And I didn't know about the temperature and not being able to work it, which would make sense if we drive by and see it's closed. Now I know why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can wait quite a while waiting for, for things to get hooked up so you get pulled up. So I think this might help uh, increase attendance if you don't have to wait as long to get to the top of the hill. I try to run up and beat it, but it can be a pretty steep hill in snow, and I never win. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? My only one was going to be installed, but that's been covered. So uh, just want to make sure when you reached out to others who use this, they convey that the conveyor belt is the best way to go. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'll take a motion. Well, actually, uh, it's kind of related, but not exactly on topic, but I think I can squeeze it in. Uh, Snowmaking machine, uh, does it look like that will be happening soon? Well, How expensive are they? We are researching that right now. Uh, we okay. hope to bring our research to a future capital improvement plan for discussion. Uh, Snowmaking equipment, what I can tell you about it from the research we found, is that each each cannon uh, costs about twenty five thousand dollars new, uh, and I don't know we would need uh, several of them out at uh, at the hill. Uh, so there's the cost for that, and then the big uh, cost, which has been a preventative, which has prevented us in the past, was finding a water source. A lot of places use a pond as a water source. We we can't get a pond there, so uh, we either would have to drill a a well and get a pretty significant pump to pump water out or we would have to rely on city water system and, and pay for the water just using regular city water uh, which is what the pack which what is what we found out the packers do at title town so we hmm. reach out to them to see how much money they spend on their water bills we're hoping to get that information and then share it from there uh, but then on top of the water cannon costs or the snow cannon costs, you're going to have to get some grooming equipment, which is a large tractor to spread the snow evenly and create sledding lanes. So, and there's an additional cost to that. So it's not a cheap um, endeavor to make snow. But we'll talk about it at a later date. Great date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bear Creek, that wouldn't ser service somehow for water? That is too far away. I don't see how we could feasibly pump water from the creek, and I don't know if we could get a, a permit which would allow us to do that. It'd be difficult. Okay. Thanks. Well, uh, I took us on a sideshow. My apologies. Go. Anybody want to make a motion to approve? Approve. Second. Motion by Alder Weary to approve. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Opposed? That passes unanimously. Are we ready for? We are ready for the next item. Okay. Item number three, consideration with possible action on awarding the purchase of a forestry aerial lift truck to the lowest responsive responsible vendor not to exceed $204,680. Dan? Yeah, so at the time when we put the agenda packet together, uh, we did not have the quotes in hand. So that's why it was written as lowest responsive responsible vendor. Uh, and not actually awarded to a specific vendor. So a bid opening for the quotes was yesterday. Uh, today we are able to do some research and contact uh, some of the low vendors and ask some additional questions. And about an hour before the meeting, I emailed everyone on the committee uh, the summary of the bids or the quotes uh, for your review for discussion today. Because we are able to make a recommendation at today's committee now what I will do is I will put up on the screen the quote summary for those of you who have not had a chance to see it. Um, is everybody able to see that on their screens right now? If not, I'll try to handle this a different way. Not yet. Yeah, nothing yet. Okay, what I will do then is I will share the screen with James and he will try to pull it up on his screen. Give me just one minute. James should be able to pull it up on his screen, hopefully. Maybe we could act it out in charades. Or we could just open our email and look at it and you can talk about it. Well, it'd be good for the public is the thing. Because it wasn't in the packet. Do you see a share screen at the bottom? Of course. I mean, it'll, it will be part of the packet for the council, so the public can look at it then if we can't get it going now. There we go. See it now? Yep. yep. Okay. All right, so here's a quote summary uh, that was provided to us, and uh, there were four vendors that quoted on this. Uh, vendor one was the low quote at $217,524 and it went up to $233,137. Uh, after reviewing the quotes, uh, vendor one, uh, we are not recommending. Uh, if you look at the bottom, the lead time for vendor one was 960 to 990 days, which is close to three years uh, for a bucket truck. Uh, so just for that reason, we're not recommending vendor one. Uh, then we went to vendor two next. Uh, they, their quote was acceptable, but they did have a few exceptions. So their equipment was fine and quoted properly, but they had some exceptions. And one of the exceptions was the lead time. If you look at that, it says 360 plus days. Um, so we called and asked what that meant. And what that meant is they can't commit to a lead time, but it's gonna be over, uh, over 360 days. They said currently their lead time is 450 days, but they cannot lock into a lead time date until they're able to secure a chassis, which we don't know how long that would be. Uh, so that's kind of a, a gamble uh, with the lead time. Secondly, uh, they did put um, a condition in their quote that uh, surcharges might apply at the time of the invoice based on global economic conditions and supply chain availability. And the surge charge amount will be communicated approximately 30 days prior to invoicing, which is usually at time of delivery. So uh, that raised a red flag in the fact that they, you know, per this quote, they can charge additional fees. 
uh, based on the economy and availability, and we're not going to know that until a month before it's delivered. Uh, so therefore, we did not feel comfortable with vendor number two for those two reasons. Uh, we then uh, looked at vendor number three, and we feel fully confident that their piece of equipment is adequate, will serve our needs, and met all of the specs, and they did not um, have any exceptions to the quote. So we are recommending going with vendor three uh, through USSI Holdings, Inc., uh, for a total cost of $231,439. And uh, they are out of Appleton, Wisconsin, uh, so they are somewhat local. As far as budget for this, uh, funding for the purchase will come from city bonding. So in 2021, we bonded for several pieces of equipment uh, to purchase forestry equipment. And we just like to change things a little bit differently than what we bonded for back then. And, we're changing this primarily because of the new structure with the two new forestry two workers that this lift truck uh, will be more beneficial than what we requested funding for. So we requested $180,000 uh, towards the purchase of a spider lift uh, for the forestry department. And this is a specialty lift that just reaches out farther than a bucket truck would, uh, but it's not a truck. It's just a lift that sits on a trailer. So. Um, it really, the bucket truck is just a better fit for the staffing that we have set up for us right now. Uh, so between that and the trailer for it, uh, that's about $182,000 right there. Uh, we also requested $35,000 to uh, buy a, a dirt screener. After researching that dirt screener, we found out that that really isn't going to work for us uh, based on what our assumptions were when we originally at requested that money. And then that leaves us about $10,000 short, uh, and we would come up, we are able to come up with that money uh, because of recent purchases we did where the, it cost cheaper, other equipment we purchased came in cheaper than what our budgeted line items were. So all of the money is coming from the 2021 bond request for forestry equipment. It's just uh, we're structuring it a little bit differently, but we do have the money in hand. So uh, I would recommend approval of vendor number three, which is USSI Holdings, Inc., uh, for a total cost of $231,439. Any questions, comments? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Alder Weary to approve. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I don't know why we need the air to lift the truck, but uh, why we want to lift truck into the air. Aerial lift truck, never mind. On to informational. I do not have anything in addition to add from what's in the report. Okay. Very good report. Any questions, comments? I read it. It was good. Okay. Always uh, take a motion to receive and place on file. So moved. Thank you. Motion by Alder Derlach to receive and place on file. Second by Alder Weary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that is received and placed it on file. Our next meeting is December 15th. Uh, same time, same batch station, same year. And uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Motion by Alder Derlach to adjourn. Second by Alder Weary. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thanks, Dan. Excellent job, everyone. Uh, when do we want to get together for more fun? For INS. 530, 535. Is Steve, is there? Steve five, ready? Five, according to Steve. What is Steve? Sorry, what? Uh, Director Grenier uh, is requesting 535. 535? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Hey, Steve, then. Thank you. Dean Tan. Hi. Alder Weary? Did, yes. did you hear about the ethics complaint?